so if anybody wants to take the jacket off, please feel free. Oh, yeah! So let you guys loosen your ties there. Uh, I, I, am, I am thrilled to be here uh, with all of you. I want to thank all the Black Hawks who are here. Especially thank uh, uh, Dr. Stephen Laws uh, for the great introduction, uh, but also for his service. He's about to retire soon, so give him a big round of applause. The Blackhawks principal, uh, Dr. Wayne Shepherd. And uh, I know that there are a few Mountaineers here as well. So. because I decided it was time to get out of Washington. I want to hit the open road and come visit some of the most beautiful parts of this great country. We just had an unbelievable drive. We, we, we came across uh, and uh, from Asheville, stopped in Marion for some barbecue. Went to the general store in Boone to buy some food. Halloween's coming up, so I had to stock up a little bit. Saw the mountains, saw some lakes, and saw all the wonderful people in this part of the country. Uh, somebody asked me, why do you come back to North Carolina so much? I said, I, there is just something. The people of North Carolina are so nice. They are gracious and they are kind and even the folks who don't vote for me are nice. They got, they, uh, so, the, so I love North Carolina but I also thought it would be good to hear from all of you. Because it seems that your voices aren't being heard in Washington right now. Now this, this is a tough time for a lot of Americans. Here in North Carolina, a lot of folks have spent months looking for work. Others are doing their best just to scrape by. You give up nights with the family to save on gas, Make the mortgage, folks postponing the retirement so they can send their kids to college. Now, I think we all understand most of these problems were not caused overnight. We, 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 we've been dealing with some of these problems for a decade now. Manufacturing leaving America to go overseas. But we've had a healthcare system that didn't work and put burdens on families and businesses. Yes. We haven't had an energy policy in this country that makes sense and frees ourselves from dependence on foreign oil. Yes. Our schools yes. haven't done everything they need to to make sure our young people are trained and college has become more affordable for too many young people. So there are a lot of challenges that we won't solve overnight because they weren't caused overnight. Yes. It's going to take time. To rebuild an America where hard work is valued and responsibility is rewarded. It's going to take time to rebuild an America where we restore a sense of security for middle class families. An opportunity for folks who are trying to get into the middle class. An America with an economy that's built to last and built to compete where we are out educating and out innovating and out building every other nation on earth. That's what we've got to build. And we've got to build an economy that works for everybody. Not just 
we give a tax cut to virtually every small business and every worker in America. Democrats said we need to go back to the old days when Wall Street wrote its own rules. make it easier for small businesses to grow and to hire and to push this economy forward. Now, remember, remember I said, here's the kicker, remember I said that these independent economists had evaluated our plan, we presented it, not folks who work for us, we said, all right, what do you think this will, they said this will create uh, up to two million jobs and will grow the economy. One of those same economists took a look at the Republican plan. And you know what they said? They said, well, this isn't going to do much to help the economy in the short term. It could actually lead us to losing jobs, not gaining them. So much for their job plan. So I'll let you decide which is the real American job plan. Because the fact is we face a choice in this country right now. I want to work with Republicans in any way possible to create jobs right now. And the fact is, let me say this, let me say this. I have been over backwards. I have shown myself to be willing again and again. I, I, I tried so hard to cooperate with Republicans. Democrats have been getting mad at me. But the reason I have is because my attitude is when we're in a time that's different. We can't afford to play politics. When we're in a time that's difficult, we should try to find common ground. Just last week, Congress passed a bipartisan trade agreement with Korea that would allow us to sell more goods into that country. Now, you know, we've got a bunch of Hyundais and Kias here. I think that's fine, but I want to see some Koreans driving Fords and Chrysler. <laughs> for us to stop trying to satisfy some branch of the party and take some common sense steps to help America and create jobs and to help the middle class. And that's, why, that's why, even though they said no the first time, we're going to give them another chance. You know, I think maybe the first time, because we had it all in one bill, maybe they didn't study it all properly. Maybe they didn't know what they were voting against. So we're going to chop it up into some bite-sized pieces. And give them another chance to look out for your job instead of looking out for their own job. First thing we're going to do is this week, Congress is scheduled to take a vote on whether we're going to put hundreds of thousands of police officers, the firefighters, and teachers back on the job. Yeah. And, and we've got to help state and local governments who are under a severe budget crunch make sure that they are not laying off teachers at a time when we know we've got to be selling education. Yeah. All over the country and right here in North Carolina. Yeah, right. Folks are losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. Nearly 2,000 classroom positions have been eliminated this school year. And here, West Wells High. I know some teachers weren't rehired. You've had to increase class sizes. And there's almost no money for things like textbooks. This makes no sense. I can tell you the last thing a superintendent wants to do is to lose good teachers. Your governor has been fighting against education cuts as well. It's unfair to our kids. It undermines our future. When countries like Korea and Germany are hiring teachers and preparing their kids for the global economy, and we're laying out teachers left and right. One North Carolina uh, teacher said, we didn't cause the poor economy. If anything, we built the good parts. And he's absolutely right. Our teachers built the good parts of this economy. They give our kids a chance to compete. They give our kids a future. That's what we've got to look out for.
more than 13,000 education jobs here in North Carolina. So when the Senate votes this week, when the Senate votes this week, you all have to tell them, it's time to put our teachers back to work. When you give members of Congress a chance to vote on the other components of the bill. But we're going to ask them to vote on whether construction workers should sit idly by while China's building the newest roads and bridges and airports, or whether we should put our construction workers back to work rebuilding America so that we can compete in the 21st century. But it's a choice that Congress is going to have to make. Congress is going to have to make a decision whether they decide to help unemployed Americans who are struggling or whether we should make sure that we give them the experience and support that they need to get back in the workforce and build a better life. We'll, have, we'll ask Congress whether we should stand pat and let people like me take advantage of uh, corporate loopholes and, and pay less in taxes, or should we ask folks like me to pay my fair share so that we can give tax cuts to middle class yeah. yeah. These are the choices that members of Congress are going to have to make in the coming weeks. And if they vote against these proposals, if they vote against taking steps that we know will put Americans back to work, they've got to they, they've got to explain not to me but to you why they're doing it. They don't have to answer to me, but they do have to answer to you. You sent them there. Yeah. They're gonna have to come down here to North Carolina and tell kids why, why they can't have the teachers back. They're going to have to look construction workers in the eye and tell them why they shouldn't be rebuilding roads and bridges and airports. They're going to have to explain to working families why their taxes are going up while the richest Americans and largest corporations are getting a sweet deal. So that's where you guys come in. Some of these folks are just not getting the message. So I've got to make sure your voices are heard. I need you to give Congress a piece of your mind. And they don't, they don't work for special interests, they don't work for lobbies, they work for you. And if they're not delivering, you need to let them know. And, and I don't know whether you're going to get on the phone and you're going to tweet them or write them a letter or pay them a visit, but tell them to do the right thing. Tell them what's at stake here. There are too many fellow Americans hurting. And you can't stand by and do nothing. Now's the time to act. And by the way, you know, there's going to be an election, and we're going to have a convention right here in North Carolina. And that convention is 11 months away. The election is 13 months away. And folks can't afford to wait that long. They, they, they can't sit around just listening to a bunch of political arguments. They need action. And they need it now because folks are living paycheck to paycheck. The folks who are living week to week. And I don't accept the idea that in the face of that kind of hardship, that we're going to stand by and do nothing. That's not who we are. We are Americans. You know what? We keep working at things until we get them fixed. Yes, we had a problem with the financial crisis, and the economy is not where it needs to be, but we can fix it. We just got to stay on it. We've got to be persistent. We've got to keep on trying things okay, well, until I, I thought, I thought folks were, are back to work and the economy is growing again. And we've got to muster that spirit right now. A can-do spirit, not a no-we-can't spirit, but a yes we can I know that sometimes everybody watches television and you see what's going on in Washington and you get discouraged. But, but I just want you to remember that we've been through tough times before. This is a country that's been through a revolutionary war, a civil war. We got through slavery. We got through a depression. We got through World War I. We got through World War II. We have, we have been through tougher times before. 
we are going to get through this. And we're going to get it through together. Because Americans don't quit. So let's meet this moment. Let's get to work.